Hey friends, we're moving on here in chapter two and we're going to take a look at arithmetic. I know it's not very exciting and it's not a math class, um, but order of operations still does apply. And believe it or not, we get all sorts of people out in the world who don't understand order of operations. And you get stuff like this where they say, hey, you know, 95% of people can't figure this one out, this one out. And it's something like nine divided by three times three plus two. And I promise this is not a very hard problem here. But we need to remember our order of operations here. And uh, you might have heard something like, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, right? Nine divided by three times three plus two. And that means parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, addition and subtraction. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, right? That's a uh, Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And now, most people, when I give you a math problem, like let's just say, hey, what is 2 minus, oh, we'll do 5 minus 2 plus 3. Okay, right, and we, we can actually print these out. We can ask Java to do the arithmetic here, right in the print line, it'll do the arithmetic. Now, we say addition and subtraction, right? This is parentheses, per, and this is exponents, uh, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, right? Multipli multiplication? Oh, goodness, I even spelled that one wrong. All right, come on, give me the spell check. Spell check, multiplication. There you go, multiplication and subtraction. Subtraction, there we go, okay. Okay. Anyway, we say multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, but you don't do addition first and then do a subtraction, right? Addition and subtraction really have the same level of precedence. You do them from left to right. So if I say 5 minus 2 plus 3, you don't say, oh, it must be 2 plus 3, which is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. No, they're the same level of precedence. You do them from left to right. So you do 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6, right? Same thing with multiplication and division. Just because you say multiplication first does not mean you multiply and then you divide things. So it is not three times three is nine, nine divided by nine is one, one plus two is three. No, it's nine divided by three is three, three times three is nine, nine plus two is 11, right? I don't know why this is so tricky for people, um, but I, you know, I'm worried about our K-12 education system here, right? Six, yep, three plus three is six, and 9 plus 2 is 11. Yes, we got this one right. Now, the one that is a little bit tricky for people is when they do something like this, and they throw in here parentheses. Now, you can't do this in Java land. This is a math land shortcut, meaning if two things touch, it's implied multiplication. And this one, I, I guess, is fair for people to get tri tripped up on, but really, it just means the same thing as multiplication, right? It, it doesn't change the order of precedence at all. But we're used to saying like 3x when we get to algebra instead of 3 times x, right? We just, we take that out and say 3x, right? Because we know that means 3 times x. But it really is the same thing here then, right? So order of operations is still followed. If you want something to happen first, if you want the 3 times 3 to happen first, well then put some stinking parentheses in and do the 3 times 3 first, right? 3 times 3 then, sure, now you get 9 divided by 9 is one, one plus two is three, right? You can do that if you want. Um, so Java will follow the order of operations, right? It's pretty, pretty particular and handy at stuff like that. Now, these are arithmetic operations we can do. We can also do them with variables. So I can take my favorite number and I can say, hey, it's gonna equal 10 plus two. That's not all that interesting. Or I could say my favorite number equals my, fav uh, my favorite number plus 10 right? This one is much more interesting. This says, okay, take the current value of my favorite number, add 10 to it, you remember everything on the right happens first, and then assign it to the value on the left. So this will change the value of my favorite number, it essentially will add 10 to it. So we're going to make it be 12, and we're going to add 10 to it, it will be 20. And then because programmers are lazy, right, this sort of take a number and add to it is very common. So we made a combined assignment operator, a shortcut operator that says, hey, plus equals 10. Let's add 10 to it and then assign it back. Now, right, so that is the combined assignment operator. Combined assignment 
operator. This is very easily confused with not a combined assignment operator. Combined, combined assignment operator, which is my favorite number, equals plus 10. Now, this is legitimate Java code, but you'll notice the plus here is grayed out. That's like the only hint our development environment gives us that what we're saying is assign it the value of what's on the right. Remember, the equal sign is the assignment operator. It will assign the value on the right. And plus 10 is 10, right? It is adding 10, right? Additional 10, plus 10, a positive 10. So we're not saying take my favorite number and add 10 to it. We're saying set the value of, assign the value of my favorite number to positive 10. Right? So we'll set the value to positive 10. Right? Or just 10. Um, so you have to be a little bit careful with these. Um, so this is the combined assignment operator. It's perfectly legal, but not very helpful. Right? And that's not useful. And you'll notice like you can put the plus sign over here and, and do all the sorts of things here. Um, if you start moving this plus sign around, you get a red line here. So it's expression expected. So it will fail. So this one has to touch. This one doesn't have to touch because it really doesn't mean anything here. Okay, so you just got to be a little bit careful there. Um, so we can do some basic arithmetic, which is really fun, with our Java code. Now, some other fun things that we can do, right? So this will be my favorite number was 12. We've added 10 to it, right? So that when we made it 22, we added 10 more and we make it 32. I set it to 10. Ooh, well, that's not really all that useful here. Um, so how about then we say let's um equal to your number times uh which was your number so your number was 12 let's say your number times three plus six right we'll just do another expression here and then we'll print out my favorite number number is now right so we're just changing the value a bunch of times here and we'll add in here my favorite number we'll just smush it into that output here it should set us back to 42 if we did our, if we did our arithmetic right. Right, put it back to 42. All right, awesome. So we can see it's changing, it's changing. We're setting it back to 7 times 3, or I'm sorry, 12 times 3 plus 6, and so on and so on. So we can do all sorts of fun arithmetic. So you can add, you can subtract, you can multiply, you can divide. Now, I will warn you, Java is bad at division, or maybe not bad, but it's not going to do what you expect with division. So if I were to say this is 5 divided by 2 is equal to and then we'll add in here 5 divided by 2. Now, you would think you'd probably get 2.5, but turns out this is integer division. Integer division gives integer results. So if you divide one integer by another integer, you will get an integer result. You'll get the whole number result. So 5 divided by 2, how many times can I divide 2 into 5 as you know a whole number is only 2, right? You lose the decimal. So there is no decimal portion here right? It's gone. So what you can do with that then is you can give it the remainder. So we can say 5 divided by 2. Um, actually, let me just keep adding this one here. Um, with the remainder of, remainder of, and now to get a remainder, you use the modulus operator, which is the percent sign. So 5 modulus 2 is the modulus operator, gives the remainder. So it gives the integer remainder. So 5 modulus 2 will be remainder 1, right? So we'll get 2 remainder 1. So think back to your, your simple long division. Before we had decimal places, we did remainders. So now we can do that remainder math. We can say 5 divided by 2 is 2 remainder 1, right? If you want an actual result to be a double here, we can say, hey, my double answer is going to be 5 divided by 2. This doesn't work because what happens on the right happens first, and then we assign it to the value on the left. So that won't work for you. So what you need to do is one or the other has to be a double. So to get a double result from division, one or both need to be a double. Double here, right? So if either the five or the two is a double, or both of them are doubles, then we can have a double result here, and life will be good. And then I can print out um, five divided by two with a decimal, with a decimal result is, and then I can just add in here our answer. Okay, now we'll get 2.5 or 2.5, what we'd expect to get back out. Excuse me.
Right, 5 divided by 2 with a decimal is... I don't know why that thinks it's a link there. That's really weird. Huh. It's not a link. I don't know what it's doing there. That's all right. It just showed up blue because it's fun like that. Why not? Okay. So we can have these sorts of values here, right, which is really fun. The other thing you can do here is you can... Uh, what's called cast a value. So if I have integer values, like my favorite number and your number, right? My favorite number and your number are both integers. So if I wanted a double sum of my and your favorite numbers, right? A nice descriptive variable here. If I wanted them, uh, I'm sorry, product, product, uh, not sum, product of. So if we're going to multiply, no, not, oh my goodness. I want a double result. I want the uh, oh my goodness, my favorite number divided by your favorite number. There we go. That's the one I want here. So I'll take my favorite number and I'll divide it by your favorite number. Now this will give me integer division, right? An int divided by an int. So 42 divided by 12, right, should give me 3. But oh, we got to actually print that back out, don't we? So we'll say, spit that out here. There we go. Put that in the print so we can actually see it here and we should get three right as a whole number because we're getting integer division or 3.0 right so it looks like it could have been a double but it's not so if you want one of these to be treated as a double you can put in parentheses double here so to treat a value as a double you can cast it as double with double so I'm saying it a lot of times here, but if you put double in parentheses in front of a value, it tells Java, hey Java, please pretend this thing's a double here, and then we're good to go. Now I should get the actual answer here. Uh, 42 divided by 12 is 3.5. Right? I'll get a double result because one of the two operands is a double. Okay? Um, some other... Um, um, sorry... Um, other types of values we might use are strings. So if I'm going to store a string, which is just a bunch of text, like one of these things here, these bunch of text here, I can say string first name is Eric. And I'll say string last name is Charnesky. Now, all by themselves, they're not all that interesting, but I can throw them into a first name uh, plus last name here. Now, a string plus a string doesn't really add them together. It smushes, concatenates them together. So our technical term is concatenation. So we're not adding, we're concatenating. Mating. Concatenating? That sounds right. Okay, maybe that should be in double quotes there, because the other ones are singles, right? Or apostrophes. We're not adding, we're concatenating. So that will give me Eric Chernesky. Now the problem here is there's no space, right? I took one string, smushed it with another string. It didn't put any spaces in between. So it looks like a username more than a real name. So we could then add in a space if we wanted to here and concatenate first name with a space with a last name. And now we'll get right the whole name out kind of nice here. You can also do this sort of thing and save it to variables. We can have a string for full name is equal to first name plus last name, right? And then we can do our concatenation here as well. So then I can just spit out full name. Uh, by the way, if you're not familiar with all these shortcuts, double clicking on a word so single click, we'll just put the cursor there. Double clicking on it will highlight the whole thing. And then I'm using control C for copy and control V for paste. So double click for copy, double click, and then paste. Right? So I'm always a fan of shortcuts here. So it looks like it might be magic, but it's not, I promise. So let me run this one now and we'll see the value then, full name, get spit out here, which was the first name concatenated with a space, concatenated with the last name. So we can get Eric Chinesky out. So we can do strings and use values for strings as well, which is really nice, um, adding them together. Now, Java is smart enough to say, if you take a string and add an integer, it will treat the integer as a string. So when we've been printing here, right, we're taking a string and adding an integer, we're really like concatenating it here. So then if we were to say, this is Eric's, uh, how about a string for uh, Eric's name and favorite number is going to be my full name plus plus my favorite number here and then I can print out Eric's name now again I'm not typing the whole variable name here right variable name should be long and descriptive I'm typing a couple letters here and IntelliSense is saying oh hey here's a variable that has those couple letters in it and I'm hitting tab 
tab will autocomplete that. So if it looks like I'm typing super fast, I'm not, right? I'm being lazy. I'm letting the tool do the work for me because all good programmers are lazy. So now we see, right? We didn't really add in a number. We concatenated it. So Java knows, oh, you're taking a string plus an int. You probably want that int as a string, right? Just sort of a, a shortcut for us here, which is really nice. So we can use those um, as well. Okay. And then when we're talking about strings, now the funny thing about strings is they need ways to have other types of characters here. So um, my friend, um, what is there? Oh my goodness. Um, O'Shane, I think. Is that right? So O Shane is fine here, right? I can put an apostrophe inside of a quote, no problem at all. But if I were to write a story and say like my friend O'Shane said, and then I, you want, like when you're writing a story, you put in quotes the thing that they said. Hey, Eric. And that quote. Now it's all upset with me. And I get these red lines and it says can't resolve symbol hey, and it doesn't look like a string anymore. So to tell Java that you want to treat this quote as a string, not as ending this string here, we put a backslash in. So the backslash is a special character that tells Java, hey, the thing that comes after me is special. The backslash is the escape character. It means the next letter is special. It is special. Right? So now I can actually get a quote in my output here. And this will work okay. Now we'll see in our output we see quotes because we escaped them. We did the backslash and now they come up in orange like that's our indicator. Hey, this is a, an escape sequence here. So we can get that special character in. Other fun things we can do with the escape sequences or escaped characters, special things we can do. You can get a new line is a backslash n. Oh, sorry, backslash n. Now, I can't actually print that backslash n because it's not showing up there. So what you would do if you want a backslash is you'd put in two backslashes to mean, hey, I really want a backslash. Now, what a new line character means is it goes down a line. New line goes down a line, right? It will put your output down another line. It adds a new line character in between wherever this thing is here. So this will look really funny, but we'll see new line equals and then backslash n with a little space here, right? Because there's a space between the backslash n and this one here. Sure, you can do that. Um, you can do backslash r's, which are carriage returns. Um, backslash n's are more common, and depending on your operating system, you use backslash r and backslash n at the same time. And I always get confused which one is which. So I only do backslash n's because it makes my life easy. And there's also backslash t if you like tabs. So you can say, um, here's a my coffee menu menu, and then you might like have a colon here, and then you could put in quotes a backslash t for tab. There's a tab here because if you just hit tab, it will give you some spaces here, but not actually the, the right amount of spaces. So it will literally be that number of spaces. And it won't always work quite well here. So I can say one, this is coffee. And then I'll print out a two. Uh, this is espresso. And then we'll do a three for latte. Okay, so I'll get that tab in here, kind of tabbing all of those in for my menu sort of uh, aligning it nicely. Now, tabs are nice because if there's something in between them, it will still align it at the next tab. Right? So if I wanted to have, uh, you know, a dollar here and then, you know, dollar fifty here and then two dollars here, oops, sorry, two dollars here for price and then the item here, right? Let's get rid of that one, two, and three. We'll just say dollar tab and then the item here. Right, to try and get those line up with spaces would be really annoying. Oops, uh, this is too many here, too many characters, because the tab is only four spaces. So I need two tabs here. Oh, goodness. All right, this kind of defeats the whole purpose of making this look pretty. But, again, you know, it's okay. We can line it up and, and make it work here. Now, with two tabs, it'll line up nice. Now, I probably could have had that same effect if I did spaces here. Um, but, again, tabs are nice, and they're, they're sort of uh, flexible as well, where you can change the size of your tab. So if I did, like four spaces there, and two spaces there, and four spaces there or something. We could get a similar effect, like with spaces instead of tabs. I can get rid of that comment there. 
but you know then if anything changes and, and they just don't always line up nice so tabs are can be handy i'm not the biggest fan of them in the world but you know you can do tabs if you want here um all right so that's about strings so we'll take a break here and we'll pick it back up with the next topic in the next video thanks folks